Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer of space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one, a prayer written by Despair. If any gods are real, there if there's anyone out there who cares, we beg you, save us now. The Gondani have come for us. They brought mass drivers. They plan to slaughter us. We can't hold them off much longer, please. Help. The current distress signal, if it can be so called, went out in all directions. The Contani themselves received it. And they laughed as they maneuvered their fleets into final killing position. Until a single jump point opened terrifyingly close to Kern homeworld. The jump point, that low gravitational potential, sent out a shock wave that knocked the fleet from its orbit. The Contani ships were warships, and they were not so easily shaken. They applied countermeasures and returned to their positions. A single ship emerged from the jump point and broadcast a general message. This is Captain Lancer of the human battlecruiser Tamlin. We will not permit the use of mass drivers against civilian targets. The Kuntani Admiral replied, What business is this of yours? The protection of civilians is everyone's business. We do not intervene in our ordinary wars, but when a crime is too terrible, there is no need for jurisdiction. Now philosophers have spent a lot of words on this subject, but when it comes to mass drivers in cities, they can be summed up in just two. Never again. And you think you can stop me with one ship? Aboard this ship are 500 small fighters, each piloted by a veteran, a real veteran of real wars against real armies, not merely experienced in murdering the helpless. But if that isn't enough, and you destroy us, it'll be the last thing your empire ever does. Our government will uphold what I am doing today. If you destroy a human warship that was trying to prevent an atrocity, we'll see this as an act of war against us. Do you have access to historical archives? Look up the Gavlad Empire. Look at how big they were, how long they lasted. Then see if you can find the video of their last emperor begging for our mercy. We gave him a quick death. It was better than what he deserved. The tension-filled radio silence stretched to a minute and then to another. Captain Lenza didn't say anything more. He hardly breathed. If the Kern had anything to add, they kept it off of their radios. The Kantari presumably were checking the history tanks and discussing amongst themselves. And then the Kantari formed their own jump points and were gone. Shortly thereafter, the Kern president opened up a private channel. Thank you so much. We, we can nev never fully repay you. Ah, oh, are you gods? Captain Lancer laughed. No, we're people. Not too different from you, really. We've just been through more. Why did you risk yourselves for us? Because 50 years ago, we were in roughly the same place you found yourselves today. Except with the Govlad instead of the Kantadi. The Govlad were more conquerors than destroyers, but we lost millions in the initial invasion anyway. And then the rest of us were enslaved. I started my military career in the resistance. I was little more than a child. And I prayed, and I prayed to every god that I'd ever heard of, and as best as I could to the ones I hadn't. I prayed that there'd be someone, anyone, in this galaxy who stood up to the oppressors, who stood up for the innocents and for the weak, who cared. Then, one day, the factory guards were lax, and I managed to steal an FTL radio, and I sent out a general distress call, much like yours. And in response, in response, nothing. Just the cold, dark, silent, uselessness of empty space. But I dragged the transmitter to a resistance hideout in the tunnels beneath what had been one of our best technical universities. I thought maybe our physicists would reverse engineer it, figured out how FTL worked. They did something better. They got onto the Govlad automated network and started poking around for vulnerabilities. It was a real turning point for us. The day we found a buffer overrun in their weapon system was a good day. The day we kicked them off our homeworld was a really good day. The day we executed the Emperor, that was a good day too. But today, 
Today, my childhood prayer is finally answered. Today, there exists someone who cares. End of story. Story number two. The Heaven's Scroll, written by Daemic. Written in the blood of the first god, the Heaven's Scroll determined the fate of each soul. It gave the lesser Fantians dominion over the living, and it was both the strength and weakness of the gods. But not every man was content with having his fate written. Since the moment of its creation, mortals have tried to steal the scroll. The gods treated this as another game, as a chance to toy with the inferior souls that crawled and died. Then one succeeded, using their arrogance against them. The man smiled his way into the upper realms. He thieved the heaven's scroll, and he tried to destroy it. He failed with each attempt. The words of the gods are not easily broken. Unable to fulfill his first goal, and with the full might of heaven working against him, the man was able to indulge in only one act of defiance. With his own blood, he crossed out his name. From then on, the man gained many titles. The Defiler, the God's Bane, the Chosen, the Liar. Yet the gods, with all their power, could only refer to him by one. To them, he was the Nameless. Donations, shouted Era, holding up a basket. Donations for a god of pleasant fortune. Bronze for the good day, silver for a good year, and gold for a good life. Everyone, from guildsmen to slaves, crowded into the streets to celebrate their rest day. Several were feeling generous enough to toss her a coin or two. May the gods give you fortune, she responded, raising her hand in blessing. The people parted as a blue smocked priest strode down the streets, and Era ducked into an alley. With a smile, she counted her coins. The day had just begun, but she'd already made enough for a day's bread. Of course, none of the money would actually go to the temple's coffers. Era wasn't a priest. She wasn't even an altar girl. Once the real priests left, Era returned to a spot by the side of the road. The gods smile on the giving. Era winked at a particularly attractive and wealthy boy. He walked by without even a glance. Undeterred, she continued her chant, scanning the crowd for potential customers. Era met the gaze of an old man, and she faltered in her reaction. He'd been standing by the same cart for nearly an hour. If he'd been one of the Rankiters, Era wouldn't have minded. She knew them well, and everyone on the streets watched out for each other. This man was a stranger, and he'd been observing her for an uncomfortably long time. The man had seen her avoid the priests. Did he know? Was he from one of the holy orders, or worse, was he one of the god's own servants? A coin a day keeps the demons away, Era called out, rallying. She was being paranoid. It was probably all coincidence. Obviously, the man had to prove her wrong by crossing the street. He pushed through the crowd, his eyes locked on her and her basket. Era tensed. Running now would be a clear sign of guilt, but remaining here was risking being caught. She shifted from foot to foot. Era had bluffed her way out of more than one sticky situation. She decided to stay. The man had made it through the throng, and he now stood in front of her, arms crossed. Despite his dark eyes and shawl, he didn't seem angry. If anything, he looked amused. And you, sir? Era smiled brightly at him. Do you wish for some good luck? He was quiet for so long that Eren's new confidence had started to falter. Luck! He said finally. His voice was rough, but surprisingly gentle. Yes, I've been in need of that. With the stiff, slow movements, the man reached into his sash and pulled out a coin. He dropped it into a basket, and Era gasped. The coin was gold. May we both make our own fortunes. Era barely blinked at the odd turn of phrase, too preoccupied with the immense wealth she now had. Era hadn't prayed for eight years, and she wasn't about to start again, but she came damn close. Thank you, she murmured. Era blinked back tears, thinking of everything she could do with the sudden windfall. Her life, and her sisters, and her nephews. No one would go hungry for years. The man dug back into the street and was lost in the river of people. Era smiled. She didn't think the gods were looking out for her, but
but clearly, someone was. Death to traitors! Death to heretics! Yeared the cloud. Dry-eyed Era stared back. She didn't regret it. A rock hit his shoulder, but she refused to cry out. Era couldn't move, even if she wanted to. A thread, goddess's hair they called it, bound her arms, legs, and mouth. Each time she tried to break it, it grew tighter. It had already scored a deep red lines into her flesh. Blood seeped into a white shaft. Slowly, she ducked her head, to find turning to exhaustion. The crowd pushed closer, spitting and screaming. I won't offend you by saying it's my fault. A deep, familiar voice startled her into looking up, but my involvement couldn't have been helped. Her eyes widened. Standing a foot from her was a man, the same one who'd gifted her the coin. Hera opened her mouth, forgetting the goddess's hair, and the thread pulled tighter. They've always been arrogant, he said softly, stepping forward. If they used chains or even rope, it wouldn't be this easy. He bent down. Prepare to run. With a single fluid movement, the man broke the thread. He grabbed her arm, and they both ran to one place the crowd didn't fill. The din ceased, and the echo of footsteps and marble stairs filled the silence. Era and the man ran into the temple. Priests shouted to cast their spells, but each flare of light dissipated on them like water and stone. Era's blood left a trail as they bolted across the pristine floor. The eyes of the temple statues burst with light and life, and Era knew that she would now... The world shifted, and the two of them now stood in an empty field. The man fell to his knees, panting. His shawl had fallen away in their escape, displaying the red circle burned into his cheek. You're him, she whispered, the defier. He didn't meet her eyes, instead looking into the distance. She followed his gaze to see the ruins of the grey city, Beria, destroyed in recompense for his sin. What would you have done? He said raspily. What? What would you have done had I not arrived? Reiterated the man, louder this time. Hera opened her hand, revealing a shard of glass that someone had thrown at her. Her hand was cut and raw from holding it. Picking it up had caused a thread to dig so deeply in the first place. I'd have killed myself. She looked at the man until he finally faced her. I'd rather die than be twisted for the gods. The man stared at her for a long moment. Then he smiled. How would you feel about killing them instead? And thus begins the story of Era, the butcher of the gods. End of story. This is a special thank you to the one, the only, the legendary Erak Hino, who has become the only Tier 6 patron. I just want to thank the T5 patrons and channel members. Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Australia the Dreamer, Trigan95, Fjordi Giol, Meridian117, Elysia, Jordan Buxbaum, Angry Marine, Albarden Gasta, and Barky. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.